Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. So a brother in Christ has a wonderful testimony about how Jesus Christ rescued him out of a homosexual past, and he wanted me to share this testimony on my channel. But before I do, before I share you his testimony, I like always, I want to encourage you guys that if you want evidence as to why Christianity is true, look in the comment section of any of my videos. For example, this video titled Vision from God about two faces of evil that are in power right now. If you simply scroll down to the comment section, you'll see that I uploaded a long comment that has a bunch of evidence for Christianity. So if you're not a Christian and or if you're a skeptic, please read this comment and examine it. If you are a Christian, I also encourage you guys to read this comment and please spread this. You can print it out and give it to people or you can post it on social media. Also in the description box of all my videos, I have a message about the end times, the Antichrist, the rapture, things of that nature. So read that also if you're interested. I will now play you the Brother in Christ testimony and I'll also include a link to his channel down in the description box. Hi everybody, this is the first time that I ever make a video on YouTube and to be sure that I don't forget to tell you everything that I want to tell you today, I put little notes on the side so I, if I appear to look a lot on different directions, this is the reason why. So I wanted to make this video to testify about one great thing that happened to me last week and be able to share this with you about what Jesus recently did for me. I was born in a Christian family. I think I've always been knowing God, but I always had different kind of struggles that wouldn't allow me to fully live my faith. Soon during my teenagehood, it turned out that I had homosexual attractions. And I've been spending most of my life trying to deal with this. But I was never really able to do it on my own, I guess. It was something that appeared to be really rooted deeply within me. And for some years, I just poured in this kind of lifestyle, even though I was reluctant to go any further in the gay circle. I remember I've been with one other friend dealing with the same attractions. And I remember we were trying to together to figure how we could live according to our faith at that time and with those feelings. But as much as we tried to pull ourselves out of this, back in the times we didn't really manage to do so. And I guess the roots were already too much settled in our hearts to do something about it in our own way. There would already be a lot to say about this. And uh, because I want this video to be as short as possible, I won't have the ability to expose everything and I also want it to be precise and specific about what happened to me lately trying to give you as much details as I can so as for me I continued my journey dealing with this as much as I could but feeling in my heart that it, this wasn't fully right I think that I never really accepted myself as being gay and I could never really see a proper future for myself and without really realizing or acknowledging it I was always getting involved into different projects or travels, always thinking they were going to be the last for me. I was not suicidal, but I was completely unable to picture what my future could be, and it was most likely that I would always let myself go astray, in a way that I was neglecting myself, because I didn't think deeply that I was worth something, or that I could ever have a chance to get somewhere in life. I knew that God has always been there for me and I remember that it already happened that I felt really angry at him because I thought he wouldn't answer my prayers and I didn't know they were wrong. For instance, I was once reading through a book of David Wilkerson and I remember him saying that it was God's issue to whether wait or give an instant answer to prayers and applying this to me. I got really angry knowing that it had been already month, and I couldn't understand why God had me struggle with this for so long. I couldn't see what was wrong about willing to get out of this lifestyle and eventually I threw the book out of my bed and decided that it was really unfair. And then I remember suddenly having the Holy Spirit convincing me at that moment of his humility. From one minute to the next, I went from being angry to crying my eyes out in the bed, asking God for forgiveness. So this is one of the examples showing that God wouldn't let me down in this journey. 
And so I went on carrying that heavy burden until some days ago when something completely new happened. I was gone already for a while in the long-term travel and when I had to come back to France, I didn't have a clue of what I was supposed to do with my life, but I had the chance to have some really inspired people in my way that made me understand at the end of my stay that the time had come for me to settle down somewhere and build a life. Back then I couldn't really realize what they meant because of my troubles with picturing my future but I could feel in the same time a really strong injunction. So I went back to France with no idea or no plans about what I was going to do, but as the words that had been told to me were resonating in me, I decided just to take a few days to meditate upon them. And in the end, I understood that I had finally to live as an adult and take my life in hands, which I was not able to do beforehand for many deep reasons that I understood when I settled down in the South. One of the reasons for I could hardly handle my adult life was because I would automatically have to deal with all those issues about my sexuality and my big lack of hope for the future. So I went here thinking that all that I was needing was a job to be able to ensure my installation and flat sharing with another friend that would come later. I can already tell you that I was completely wrong about my needs and that they were indeed way wider than these. I've been apart from church for quite a while and it never really crossed my mind again that I would be visiting one again any sooner. The reason for this is that I didn't feel in the churches I used to go around with that they were the true community they were meant to be. I found them instead being mostly lifeless and unable to deal with more issues than filling two hours on a Sunday morning. Even if I know saying this, that this is not ultimately the case for all of those, but I could never really feel that I was a part of them anyway. Furthermore, in my previous experiences in life, I could really see that this community I was looking for could be found also with Christian friends or Christian people that I would just meet occasionally. So for that point, I was not really able to see the point of going to buildings that would call themselves churches when it could be much more simple than that. So when friends of my family told me about this church being a way to make relationships that would allow myself to maybe find opportunities to get a job or a position somewhere, I wouldn't go because I could not agree with this fact that I would go to the church for this reason, which was a little bit calculating for me. In addition to this bad picture that I had of churches in a more global way, I had visits of friends and also of my mom that insisted that we would go together on Sunday. So because of this, I decided to say yes and follow her there, but clear on the idea that I wouldn't go there to find anything. And something happened that I could not plan at all on that Sunday. As we were going there and as we were on our way to the bus station, I began to feel God talking to me. And I knew what it was like. I, I knew it was him. I couldn't really hear something in particular, but it was as if he was elevating and considerating me. This feeling kept going until we found ourselves in the church that day and the message was about the way of the cross and people that would go through Wednesday in their lives being the day when Jesus suffered the most on his way to Calvary. And it began to be really powerful and insisting in me, I remember I was catching my tears to fall down and feeling this pain inside of me as if there was some bound that would relate me to this Jesus. As I thought it was off, I went to the bathroom around the end of the message and as soon as I locked the door behind me, I started to cry instantly. It was really painful tears and I wouldn't really understand what was going on at that moment, but according to the message, it was all about crying our pain to God in the end and think that that was precisely what was happening at that precise moment. And then I couldn't hold back my tears. It was as if the Holy Spirit would express himself inside of me for all that I had to go through and all that mess that was inside of me. In this precise morning, something changed in how I used to view Jesus on his way to Calvary. Because I remember that for a long time before, I wasn't really able to fully understand the work of Jesus. 
on the cross and remember I remember asking God a lot about this for me I could only see the physical pain that he had but it wouldn't really allow myself to bound any other to any other suffering that he had to endure and on this morning I realized that his pain was also tormenting him in his soul and in his mind for the past few days before this I was also torn into this kind of feelings as if I was tormented in many ways and for this I could completely relate to what was said at that moment though the pain that was expressed was really dense afterwards I kind of went back to what I would call my normal everyday life dealing with all kind of addictions and wrong behaviors or conceptions that I had so maybe I could cry out to God for what was happening in me but yet I didn't have this change that would pull me out of all those deadly habits I found myself alone again for the rest of the week and I remember feeling really concerned about what I was committing myself into it was kind of burning in my conscience that I was doing a lot of wrong things but I couldn't really pinpoint exactly what it was until that point where I was about to just let it and go spend the night to some guys I just met but I was feeling deep in myself some kind of sadness and it was as if I had two kind of choices in front of me the first one saying that it wouldn't be that bad if I just had to go and mess around because in the end there was not really something that I could do about it but I could also really feel that it was not the right way to go and I believe that this sadness was all about the Holy Spirit feeling sad about what I was about to put myself into. And I recalled at that moment the scripture that says not to sadden the Holy Spirit inside of us. And I believe it marked a turning point to decide on what I was willing to do at that moment. And I was really, it was really hot rending. But in the end, I cut short and decided just to go to bed. It was about two nights before I decided to go back to church again and this time alone and the day after I really decided that whatever was inside of me that God wanted me to lay down no matter how ashamed I was on and fearful to expose it I was going to do it and this is when I could feel another big turning point in all this the first time I went to the church I could feel that I was holding something really shameful and disgusting in me and I remember being really afraid that other people would see it and then to expose it but I felt that I had to bring it on and cry to God for this not to consider what the others would think about me which was really hard to do but to put my faith in the one that could set me free from it so for the second time I planned to go back to church I was resolved to run to this Jesus that could set me free from all this and the night before I had to go there I remember that I suddenly felt his presence so thick just in front of me and as I was in my bed getting ready to sleep his presence was irradiating everything and it was a little bit as if something was removed from inside of me but not all of a sudden really slowly and respectfully but the radiation of his presence wouldn't stop and I was feeling so much things coming at the surface like plans for my life and all brand new purposes and I kept going until the moment I got into the church I took a seat in a place where nobody could really reach me though I knew nobody there I wanted to be a part to be able to lay down all that I wanted to lay down on that morning and it was so powerful again I was feeling his presence touching in the deepest of my heart and at one point I decided to come in the front and just be in awe of what he was doing for me and it was also just the beginning of something new the service went on and in the end I just left not even talking to the pastor and I went back home what happened this morning is that it was the true beginning of the way of repentance for two days on I was just crying on and on again I was in tears to my bed because I felt so broken inside but something changed from that moment I can tell that something was definitely made new 
because all the bad and wicked thoughts and all the rest kept coming back to me, but this time it was really as if they had no hold on me anymore. They would just stop at the entry of my mind, but they were no longer they would no longer come in. It was as if as soon as Jesus began this work in me, I was realizing deep down how wrong I was about so many things. And I don't know how to clear how clear I can actually make this. Because it was about so much, and it was so deep down in me. But I can tell that in this morning, Jesus heard my prayer and pulled me out of homosexuality. And this is not about trying to change on my own strength, or about trying to arrange things. So I would basically pull my own self out of it. Because everybody that is going through this know that this is an impossible thing to do. This morning was about an encounter with the love of Jesus and how his person facing me transformed my life and plucked out all the lies and all the misconceptions that I had about how I would see and deal with my own body, about how I would see and how I would deal with others' bodies and all the different kind of addictions, whether it was pornography or sugar, I can tell that Jesus has this power to pull someone out of this. So this is not just about homosexual behaviors. It's about what Jesus is able to do in everybody's life because if he has the power to remove something that was rooted so deeply inside of me, beyond everything that I could do to try to put me out of this, I realized that the true thing was not only to be wishing to be set apart, but to be wanting Jesus only. And I realized today that he is really all that I want beyond my troubles, beyond everything that I wish I was, or I wish I had been in my life. Jesus is way above everything else. And this is the true message that I want to share with you today. So if you are yourself caught into this kind of situation and you feel that there is something wrong, well, in the first place, if you don't believe in Jesus, I can tell you there is, because nobody is good outside of him and is the only person indeed that is able to reconciliate us with God. He is the only true way to the Father, and to encounter the love He has for me was just to show me the true purposes that He has for my life and the way of freedom He wants me to walk through. So again, I would have much more to say about this, and I hope this video maybe raised questions, maybe encouraged somebody. Whatever, please let me know, and thank you for watching.